There's, there's a gap that exists in uh, colon cancer detection. Uh, colon cancer, as you know, is a very important problem. Uh, it's the number two cancer killer in this country and one of the major cancer killers worldwide. Uh, it affects about one in every 18 people, 6% of our population. And we know if this disease can be detected early, it can be cured. And even more importantly, if we can detect the pre-malignant polyp and remove it, we can prevent this de disease altogether. That would be the ideal outcome. Now, uh, to detect early stage cancer and pre-malignant polyps, uh, which occur without symptoms in most cases, you need a screening test. And the available screening tests uh, are not ideal. Uh, some of them are really quite good in some ways, but in other ways not. For, for example, some tests are invasive, expensive, require bowel prep. Those are disincentives for patients. Other tests are uh, inexpensive, but don't work very well, and especially don't detect the precancerous polyps, like fecal blood testing. So we started with the end in mind, designing a test that was user-friendly, non-invasive, could be sent to the patient's home, uh, wouldn't require a, a doctor visit necessarily, wouldn't require a bowel preparation, diet changes, medication changes, and would detect both cancer at early stages and precancer. And so the test that we came up with over the last more than a decade was a, a stool DNA-based test. And uh, that works by detecting tumor changes in the DNA that sheds off the tumor and can be recovered in the stool. Uh, it requires a fairly sophisticated analytical method and uh, some of that was developed here in the Mayo Clinic lab and uh, it's been uh, refined in collaboration with Exact Sciences, uh, a company in Madison, Wisconsin, who is taking it uh, to commercialization through FDA. Uh, we're in the final stages of that. Uh, we expect this test to be available uh, early to middle of next year. So uh, the data uh, from a sensitivity standpoint are extremely promising. Uh, we've published recent, recent reports on how the test works for detecting cancer in, in polyps. The very most recent uh, study, a so-called case control study, uh, was, uh, was remarkable. This was using an optimized version of the test. And for cases with cancer, patients with cancer, the test detected 98% of those patients, almost all of them. Uh, for patients with the precancerous polyps, the majority were detected. And as the polyps grew larger in size, which is in paralleling the increase in their risk to transform to cancer, the test becomes increasingly positive. So with the largest, most at-risk polyps, the test detects uh, them with a sensitivity approaching that of colon cancer. Those are results that compare very favorably with an invasive colonoscopy. So this is a tool which we hope will be a user-friendly approach that will bring more people in for screening. And like a pap smear, which has virtually eliminated cervical cancer because it detects the pre-cancerous changes in the cervix, we think a test like this, broadly used in the population, could go a long way toward eradicating colon cancer by detecting the precancerous polyps. We've talked about sensitivity, how well does it detect the cancers and polyps. The specificity involves a measurement of does it cause false positives? Is it negative when it should be negative? If there are too many false positives, that increases patient anxiety and it increases the cost of a screening because you do unnecessary follow-up colonoscopy. So we looked at uh, 500 patients in this study that had a normal colonoscopy. And we looked at all sorts of clinical variables, medications, uh, alcohol, tobacco, body weight, family history of colon cancer, uh, and so forth. And the only, the only variable that proved to be significant was age. Uh, and as patients got older, the rate of false positives increased somewhat. Uh, but we looked at multiple DNA markers, and for some of the markers uh, that, we, that are very good for detecting lesions, 
had little effect with age. And so we know we can select those for the test and not use the, the markers, the DNA markers that have a positive effect with age. So that does, goes a long way to reducing uh, markedly the false positive rate. Now, the, but the important finding in this, findings in this study have to do with what doesn't cause false positives, and that was, that was everything else. Uh, so patient gender, no effect. Uh, the region of the country that you're from, no effect. Race or ethnicity, no effect. Body mass, we looked at patients that are obese, overweight, normal weight, had no effect on the outcome of the, of the test. Uh, smoking, alcohol, family history of colon cancer, personal history of polyps, none of these had an effect. Uh, so what that translates to and from a clinical application standpoint is patients don't have to jump through any special hoops to take this test. They don't have to change their lifestyle, their diet, their medications. The test works the same regardless of those variables.